Bashim Yahusha, Bashim Kakudash. Double line is called Venus, the apostles who break those stones coming on to the Lord for life. Double line is to y'all, man, for doing this work. Y'all get on this right sir. back. You give me your double line. Man. Yes, sir. Uh, along the brother Lakamah, the brother Maya, we had to pull the whole bus, shout, and find out what they should do to each other. Or will it lose another one? This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Speak a little louder so you can pick up everything. Right, so this is the Apostle John speaking. He was given a vision of how Esau Edom's so called white man came into power in particular rulerships. And he said he saw a beast that rise up out of the sea. We go into the word beast, the Greek word is Devion, which means uh, ferocious, bestial man, uh, savage. We know Esau Edom to be a savage and violent man. His characteristics is uh, he's known as a cunning hunter. The son who's cunning, they are uh, skillful to deceit, they're devious, and he's a hunter. A hunter is a, a predator. He preys upon the Israelites, which are us, the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. C represents people. We read about that in Revelation 17 chapter. This is Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. And he saved unto me the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth. Now the whore is Babylon the Great, which is America. Our peoples, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. All right, so the C represents the people that Esau Edom has dominion over. Come this is Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Now the seven heads represents the ancient Greeks, the Romans, the Spanish, the Britain, the uh, Germana Minor, Germana Major. These are the uh, seven heads, which are now normal. Okay, all like it. The Greeks, the Romans, the French, the Spanish, the Britons, Germana Minor, and Germana Major, which are now represents the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Uh, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was created in 1949 by America, Canada, and Western European nations. It was created to provide security against the USSR, which was Russia and Eastern European nations. That's right. It says, having seven heads and ten horns. Now the ten horns were the, the Alemannis, the Anglo-Saxons, the Franks, the Rulis, the Burgundians, the Lombards, the Suebis, the uh, Ostrogoths, the Vandals, and the Vistagars. I see now. why you want I see why you <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember that. Yeah, right. Hey, well, okay, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. Snick your snick brother. <laughs> 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 well, I spoke with you, sir. Yeah. Hey, but, but now so, so now now we're talking about the ancient <laughs> the ancient uh temple. Yep. What is it talking about now? The, the European temple? unions. Which are now twenty-eight nations. And they are vassal states. Uh, etymology, etymology for the word vassal means uh, one who stands under or uh, um, subordinate, which means law ranking. So the EU are law ranking nations under the NATO. So what are the three classifications of like rulership in the world? You're, other, you're either one of these things that applies to us, that applies to everybody, the Rothschild. You're, you're either one of these three things. When you say vassal, there was, there was two it said vassals. That's the, that's the middle one. Vassals is the middle one. What's the one over the vassals and what's the one under the vassals? You don't know? You don't know? No. You don't have to know. It's the one under the vassals themselves. There you go. I got that, sir. What's the, what's the ones over the vassals? Come on now. Elites? 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 That's, that's right, but I want a different word. That's a good one, too. That's another one. Aristocrat. That's another one. Come on now. Overlords. Oh, Overlords. Overlords. When you go back to the ancient world, they had overlords. They had vassals, which were the middle class. And then they had uh, the serfs, 
which are the lowest of the people. That's the three classes. Human society. Which is the feudal society. We're living in a feudal society. What does the word feudal mean? What does the word feudal mean? Feudal. Retainer, uh, servant. This basically says that. Okay, good, good enough. It's that pretty much, much the same thing here. Well, who got who got a servant? I got a servant. And what's that? It says an agricultural laborer bound under the feudal system to work on their lord's estate. There you go. Now, what about overlords? Look up overlords. I got something uh, on, on feudalism. Go ahead. It says the dominant social system in medieval Europe in which the nobility held lands from the crown in exchange for military service, and vassals were in turn tenants of the nobles, while peasants, it says in quotes, serfs, were obligated to live on their lord's land and give them homage. And the same thing is happening now, they just changed the name. What did, what did, what did our Biden say when he, when he campaigned for president? He said, I'm not gonna raise taxes on anybody if you're, if you're making four hundred thousand dollars a year, so everybody said that's good, and he did. He kept that promise, but did he raise taxes on, on everybody? Did he raise taxes on everybody? How did he raise taxes on everybody? Come on now, a man. That's a hidden tax. So people, if they, if, if they would have said, if they would have said. We're just gonna raise tax, but you said we're not gonna get we're not gonna raise taxes. I make less than four hundred. So what they did was they did inflation, which is around the back doorway of taxing their asses. Because what it, even economists don't understand inflation and hiking. They don't understand. It. I'm talking about professors. I guarantee you. I talk to these professors of economics. They really don't understand because all they do is regurgitate. That's my favorite word now. Regurgitate, right? That's all these professors do. When you look up the word inflation, look up the word inflation in Google, and then look up the word hyperinflation. I got overload for you real quick. Forget about overload. Okay. Go ahead. The definition of the word inflation, it means it's the rate of increase in prices over a given period of time. Inflation is typically a broad measure, such as the overall increase in prices or the increase in the cost of living in the country. But they don't tell you the why, so they're getting a bullshit answer. Now look up hyperinflation. And while he's looking it up, what does inflation mean? Give it to me in, in uh, you know, street vernacular. 
pay the value of the currency. Go into it more, explain. So when the value of the currency appreciates, everything else becomes expensive to buy. So how does, it, how, does, how does uh, the value of everything appreciate? How does the money, how does it, how, why is it that we gotta pay more money? Because, because they expand the money supply in the economy. They keep printing money, so the more money they keep printing. Thank, thank you, y'all got that? Yes. So why didn't the crew say that? Because they set up to keep you stupid. Because you got you to gotta read modern money mechanics. It'll, it'll, it'll break it down. Modern money mechanics. If you type in inflation, they give you this crazy definition. But if you type in inflation old definition, it'll tell you what the brother just said, an increase in the money supply. Look it up. Look it up. I did. Everybody look it up. Yes. Go ahead. When you type in inflation. Hold on. Go ahead. When you type in inflation, old definition, it says old economists define inflation as an artificial increase of the money supply within an economy. Well, that's inflation. But guess what? They give it to stupid people. Oh, that's what it means. So it has nothing to do. He didn't raise taxes. Yes, he did raise taxes in a roundabout way. So what's the meaning of the word hyperinflation? Look up hyperinflation. It says monetary inflation occurring at a very high rate. They really don't explain, we understand, that means they put, they, they're, they're pumping out more dollars. So does the prices actually go up? No, the value of money goes down, all right? And then it went into details, I said, what is, what is the exact definition of hyperinflation? It says hyperinflation is generally defined as price increases of 50% or more per month but in the worst known cases, case prices have doubled in days or hours. Hyperinflation happens only when people lose all confidence in the government and its institutions, usually in the aftermath of political or economic upheaval. Up this whole system that they have with the hyperinflation and, and creating money out of thin air goes back to the ancient Babylonian money magic system. But the whole foundation, the whole beliefs, everything Esau has goes back to ancient civilizations, mainly the Babylonian cap, mainly the Babylonian civilization. Now they adapted their they, their currency status, whereas they create money out of thin air. That's what the Babylonians was doing. Go to they were stealing from the people and create money out of thin air. And it was called the ancient, it was called the, the Babylonian money magic system because it was mm. it was money created out of thin air. That's what's called money magic. Because it was created out of thin air. It was not backed by anything. Mm. And that's what the American government is doing to this day with the dollar. You know? And people don't understand nice. it. The only ones that understand it is us. We understand it. Right? Right. We're right, not right. ignorant now of... We're going to go back to Revelation. Not ignorant of Satan's device. Not ignorant of Satan's device. Like I was um, you know, you talking about the word inflation. Like if you go look at the word inflation and the etymology, it means like to blow into. Like to inflate. When you think of the word inflation, you think of inflammation. Both of them do with an increase or a swelling of something. Mm. So, you know, it's related to each other. You know, yeah, somebody has a thing nice. and they have a boat and they got a million dollars in it, right? In an inflationary period, you still got the million dollars. You can count a million, whatever. But then your buying power is half of that. Yeah. Exactly. But people don't know it. So they, the government is set up to, oh, what does the word government mean? Control. 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 Right. Government, government means to control. A ship, a ship, uh, the, 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 the ship is also the government. He controls the ship, right? Yep. Met means what? Mind. So what does it mean? Government means mind control. Look it up. Look it up, somebody. Google it. Government meaning. Let's see if they tell the truth. If I put in a suit, a suit and tie and went to university, you think I'm a tie? Economist, man. Yeah, but you gotta have them shoulder pads. I gotta have the shoulder pads, of course. You gotta have the shoulder shoulder pads. You seen them blazers with the shoulder pads? About politics, government. This is, yeah. this go, is I want the word government. No, no government. Yeah, government. Go ahead, go ahead. It's from Google, government, and it has selections, just like, just like politics. It says, it says the government, the government body of a nation, state, or community, the system by which a nation, state, or community is governed. Go ahead. It says right here, it says the system of social control under which the right to make laws and the right to enforce them is vested in a particular group in society. 
That's a good one, but they're using a lot of Greek words. Yeah. <coughs> Go ahead. The, and, uh, the etymology of the word govern means to steer. To be right, which is control. Control. Yeah. control. But what does it mean, pardon me? Right they don't. They don't separate the men. They, they just give me govern. Govern, govern means yeah. steer. Yeah. Mint means mind. Yeah. Control the mind. Right. Mind control. Right. Government means mind control. I got it right here. It's from medium.com. Government means to control the mind. Ooh. Ooh. It said the word government actually means mind control. It is etymologically originated from the ancient Latin language. It splits into two. It splits into two words. Governare means to control, and mens or mentis meaning mind. So government means to control the mind. Mind control. I'm your government. I'm yeah. the president. This is the govern government. Government, you know, we're looking out for you. No, the government is looking to control your mind. I mean, control oh. your mind. Control Sir. your mind. He saw one big government. That's why you got to go on the root words. I always speak about root words, right? Yeah, yeah. I always go into the root words. See, Nathan them say, well, you guys are making the doctrine out of the Hebrew and the Greek. Well, stupid asses, you're supposed to make the, the Hebrew and the Greek part of the doctrine. When you, go to, when you go to the commentary of the Bible, those Edomite Christian scholars, when you read it, they tell you this from the Hebrew word meaning this, that's from the Greek word meaning that. When they speak about a place in the Bible, they show you the place on the map. We ain't fucking Christians, man. We ain't Baptists. Right. You know? Get me mad, bro. Come we bring that out and then I'll... I got an etymology online that says late 14. See, when we're going into Nate, that you're doing your class, you're trying to be Mr. You know, Professor of the Year, we over you, brother. We know more than you. If you sure. can't get the mark of the beast, then you're, 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 you're a kidney garden. You're a little guy. Come on, bring it out. Let's yep. go. Let's it says um, act of governing or, or ruling in 1550s system by which a thing is governed, especially a state, from old French government, control, direction, administration, modern French government, from governor to steer, be at the helm of, govern, rule, command, direct, from, Lat from Latin, governor, to direct, rule, guide, govern, originally to steer, to, to, steer to pilot, meaning governing power in a given place is is from and the meant is mind mind control mind control somebody told me that dr hard you just made that up you read you read not even some books you read it but you got to know how to decipher things you know so let's go let's go back to uh, revelation navigate this is revelation chapter 13 verse 1 and i stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasph blasphemy. Yeah, and the word blasphemy means to speak evil of the Most High, profane speaking. We know that Esau Edom, he spoke profane speaking against the Most High by claiming that he is the Most High. You're going to the. Uh, if you the call the Most High other than His true name, you're blaspheming. If you call Him Christ, Jesus, Jehovah, yeah. God, you know that's why we say we will say the name Yahweh Shai, who is ignorantly known as Christ. We, we we qualify everything. We don't be saying Most High Christ. When we do the close and loop. We ain't saying no Most High Christ bless. If I tell you to do that, please do your own thing. Do your own thing. Come on. This is uh, the word for blasphemy. In a Merriam-Webster dictionary, it means the act of insulting or showing contempt or lack of reverence for the Most High. It says the act of claiming the attributes of a deity. So Esau Edom, he claimed the attributes of Yahweh by Shemiyahu by saying that the Israelites are everything but you know, so-called black. You know, he destroyed the images of us, the judges, and he put up uh, images of so-called white people, which is a conclave. He destroyed our images and portrayed the Israelites to be white. Right. Con, this is Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Now, this leopard is the beginning of Esau, Edom, rulership. The leopard is symbolic to the Greeks. 
that notable horn in uh, Daniel's eighth chapter is Alexander the Great. And when you go into the word leopard, it's symbolic to like swiftness. And when Esau came into the power, you know, he took over nations in a fast time fashion. And also, if you are going to history, you got like his four generals like Seleucid, they wore like uh, leopard helmets and leopard skin around their neck. Uh, I got a quick piece of, this is first Maccabees. If you go to the Museum of Natural History to the Middle Eastern section, I don't know if it's still up there. There's a, uh, a bust of Alexander. He has a leopard, took a leopard, chopped the head off, made it into a, dug it all out, made it into a hat and wore it. So if you want to take a trip down there with your girl, you'll find it, you know? Uh, so they know that, man, historians know that, that one of the animalistic signs that Alexander went by is a leopard. He was also known as the goat. All right, come on. This is uh, 1 Maccabees chapter one, verse one. It reads, uh, it says, and it happened after that, Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim, had smitten Darius, king of the I'm Persians. I'm gonna ask y'all a question. I know y'all don't got the answer. Y'all got the answer, y'all good. What is Ch Chittim? The land of Chittim being called today. Uh oh, uh oh, shit. That's your man. Sorry. Did you hear that? He said it. Good, good. Thank you. You think, you think uh, IUIC can answer that question? <laughs> I don't think so. Come on, let's go. Good. Uh, it says, uh, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians, and Medes, that he reigned in his stead, the first of over Greece and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth. So when Alexander the Great came to power, he was very dom dominant, you know? He had a great power. And as we read earlier, you know, leopard symbolic to swiftness. So he took over in a quick time fashion. Tell me a little bit about Alexander the Great. How smart was, how knowledgeable was, what did he know? What did he know about How did he treat the intellect? How do you treat the other nations? He was told that he was all uh, spoken about in the Bible. So he had favor in this. Okay, then he had, but there was something that, there was something that made him believe. What happened? He had a, he had a dream. And who did he see in the dream? Priest. He saw the priest. He saw the head priest, and he saw the priest behind him, all in white. And then they said, you, you the, the head priest said, you saw that, because you you were this guy in the scriptures. He said you were the guy in Daniel 7, Daniel 8. So he knew he was the chosen guy. And by the way, they knew that uh, there was a, a movie put out in the 60s on Alexander, which was a great movie. The part where they fought against the Persians, they really got Persian El Elamite actors to play them. Mr. Burke played uh, Right, that's the one I'm talking about. Mr. Burke, yeah. Mr. And I showed it in the school. We used to have yeah, the school yeah. before we were we, we training. Yep. I was showing the movie, right? Wednesday. So one time I showed it. No, that was on the side. When it was raining. Oh, okay, right, right, right. So Ariad came in, right? And he said, what's that? Because Ariad told me about the movie, right? So I said, I watched the movie. I said, we showed the yeah. brother. Ariad came in. He said, what y'all watching? I was getting the Greek. Who told y'all to watch that? Taha? <laughs> <laughs> I remember it I remember like it was. Yeah, and he sat down and watched the rest of the movie. Yeah. So in the movie, the actors that portrayed the Persian and Medes were actually Elamites. So they, so they know the history. What else? Um, there was a couple of things. That, oh, in the movie, they knew that 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 Alexander, out of out of Philip of Macedonia's uh, line, was going to come out a great leader, and um, his father wanted to be that guy, but there was I think it was crows or something that landed whatever the roof that they landed on. God was going to be there. So when um, Philip of Macedonia saw the, I believe it was crows, if you go into history, seagulls, crows, whatever, they landed on Alexander's um, house when he was being born, and the, and the father knew this this is the fuck, this is the guy. This is the guy. I'm not the guy. I wanted to be the guy. Yeah. He knew he wanted he wanted to be that guy. He wanted right. to be Alexander. Right. And he found out that was a guy, and he kind of hated his son. Yep. And he hated his mother. Fine. When you go into the history, so they should. Esau knows, man. 
Anything that we go into the ancient world when we say the Moabites are this, Esau knows that they, they're the Moabites. Come on, let's go. Uh, I'm going to jump to verse 7. Well, uh, the Bible said there's no secret they can hide from them. That's right. So they know. Esau knows everything. Everything that you know, Esau can tell you about. They're our brother, but our wicked brother. No, that's right. So they're the closest that's right. to us. That's right. Uh, I'm going to jump to verse 7. It, said, it reads, so Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. You know, just going into how you know fast he conquered. He conquered in 12 years. All right, going back to Revelation. What did he do before he died? He conquered He cried. No, he wept. He cried. He wept. Because there were no more worlds to conquer. Where'd you get that from that movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Die. Die, die hard. Did you do the exit? Hey, could you do the exit? <laughs> Alexander <laughs> wept. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And he got sick. And why did he get sick? Because the most high used him for what he uses him. Right. He said, I'm going to make you take over the whole known world. Good job. I'm going to put a sickness on you. That's it. And he tried to heal himself, but he couldn't. Why? Because the most high made it on him, man. Yep. He said, your job is to, is to take over the whole known world. Yep. So I can ah! take you out and have the four generals take your place. Yep. Explain what kind of wickedness in, this, in, in the world. Okay. Well, hell yeah, man. Exactly Proverbs Proverb 29 and 16. Oh, he's in with, uh, with uh, 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 First Maccabees 1. I think it's around yep. 7. Wicked. That's why they took, that's the reason re reason why they took out the Maccabees. Because it names names. You know? Yeah. It names Philip of Macedonia. It names Alexander. It names Alexander. Antioch of Epiphanes. You know? Come on. Alright. Going back to Revelation 13, it reads, verse 2, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. Now the bear is symbolic to Russia. And Russia national symbol symbol is a bear. And the feet represents the end. And that's the end of the Esau Eden rulership. And Russia is gonna play a big part in the downfall of the society. Beautiful. It's happening right now. Beautiful. Right. Yeah, so how the hell is happening, man? Y'all know about Nigeria, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, now they already got French troops right now, but they're leaving it out of news. How the hell can be uh, Russia be one of the seven? When Russia is the one the Lord is going to use to be. You have the Wagner group out there helping the Nigerians. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a Russia. That's a Russia. Yeah, the, the, French are, the French are fighting against the Russians. Yeah, that's that beast. Yeah, Nate regurgitating says that. Russia is one of the seven. No, he's not one of the seven. How the hell can Russia he's be one, one of the seven, seven when the Lord is going to use? You got that from the seven. Regurgitation. Yep, regurgitation. Come on, let's go. And also the um, book of Ezekiel 38 chapter speaks about how Russia is going to be go. a leader to the other nations. Be right. a, leader, a God, a God, a leader, you know. You know, they're going to give them like resources for their military might. Yep. You know, and different weapons and things of that nature. That's right. Yeah. What's your guess? It's not here. What's your guess? They, they, they um spend all the debt that the Russian that the um the African nations owe them all the grants that they spend everything. We don't you don't owe us nothing. We got a clean slate. And we're gonna give you military cooperation, we're gonna train your soldiers, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. The Russian the Russian Russian right now. Yeah. For some European the EU nations, they're buying behind the Americans back. Yeah. That's why ultimately they're gonna shoot vessels on America. Right. Because they're yeah. buying that oil from Russia. And yeah, they ain't listening to America no more. Uh, Putin can't stand Russia, um, uh, America. Putin can't stand America. Come on. Germany is suffering. This is um, the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 2. It reads, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet was the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Now, the mouth of the lion represents Britain, which is the mother of America. America came out of Great Britain. It reads, and the dragon gave him his power. Yeah, the dragon represents the ancient Roman Empire. And the dragon gave the beast his power by the beast following the uh, philosophies, the culture, the art of ancient uh, Roman. Right. It reads, and his seat and great authority. Yup, and the Roman Empire, they had great power. Uh, the book of Daniel 7 chapter speaks about he had that great iron teeth and you know iron is a strong metal 
And that's how he used the, uh, the iron to devour the nations. That's right. Verse 3, and I saw one of his heads as they were wounded to death. Yeah, in the ancient Roman Empire, they came out of power. And that led into the Byzantine Empire, which was ran by Israelites. Uh, to name some few kings, you had Septimius Severus. You also had uh, Constantine the Great. These are Israelite kings. What about you gotta before? go. Yeah, you gotta go uh, before yeah. that. You gotta go back before that. Come on now. Uh, uh, when you, you, you been secret, you secret to say the IUIC? What they said? That's what they said. The first yeah. Israelite king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caesar right, was right. Septimius and Tiberius in 193. Come on now. Come on. No, it was way before that. Who's yeah. the first Israelite uh, that ruled uh, that southern throne of the Roman Empire? Nerva. Nerva. Oh, wow. Nerva. All right. When did Nerva come on the scene? 92 AD, somewhere around 96 AD. 96 AD. Oh! That was all four years. Then you had a, you, you had a, the, the, the king from that point on was all Jakes. Five good emperors, all right? Jakes. Five, Five good em emperors. Right. You know? Let's throw it up in there, brother. So you're going way, way, we're talking about the first Jake, the first Jake. That's what a second Ezra is. 11 and, and uh, second Ezra 11 and second Ezra 12 is all about the 12 ring, the, the 12 winged uh, feathers on the body of the, of the, of the eagle was the East of Edomite rulership from, right. from Julius to uh, the Michigan, right. and then Jake took over. Right. So when you read it, like Bishop Nader read it, because he doesn't know the breakdown. He doesn't know the breakdown. Because Ariane never taught him, and Ariane never taught him. Why do you think Ariane never taught him? Because Ariad didn't, didn't know. His spirit didn't yeah. work with Ariad to, to break that down. He tried to break it down, he broke it down wrong. They both say it's talking about a murder wrong, but it's talking about a murder. Has nothing to do with a murder. Second Ezra 11 and Second Ezra 12, and from the rulership of Julius Caesar to Domitian Caesar, and that was that's the end of them books. Alright? That's what it's talking about. So the first Jake that ruled was a man by the name of Nerva, 96 to 98 AD. What? Right. It's Revelation chapter 13, verse 3. <laughs> and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. As we mentioned, this is when Esau fell out of power during the ancient Roman Empire and dark ages came about and we ruled for about a thousand I'm years. I'm sorry, brother, I got, a, I got a question. What is the image? The image is New World Order. Right, based upon what? Uh, ancient, uh, like, Greece. New World Rome. Order is based upon what? Uh, the Roman Empire, yeah, right? Yeah. So, so Bishop Nate says the image is the picture sees the both here. Now go, I believe it's, go to the 13th verse. I think yeah. it's around the 13th, 14th verse. Or 15 verse 15? The image of the beast? 15. That's what I want. This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. He said he the here. Come on. That the image of the beast shall both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. You gotta go up to 13. God. This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 13. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they shall make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live read that verse again Con, this is Revelation chapter 13, verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image. Revelation chapter 13 verse 14 and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth 
that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. How do we know the image of the beast and not the picture sees both here? Because it had a wound by a sword and did live. When did Caesar Boger have get killed and come back to life? So that kills what, what General Nathaniel Alagar said. And he'll still teach it. He watches our videos. And his pride won't allow him to change it, man. Because he would have to admit that GM, my teachers are GMS. I'm a secret disciple of G, the men of GMS. He ain't gonna never admit that shit. He ain't gonna never admit that shit. Well, he did admit it with Corneas. We got kicked out because of Corneas' thing. Go ahead. Part of the image that the system opposes that they have a capital hill, they have a Senate house, which goes back to the ancient Roman Empire. And look at the infrastructure of America. When you go to um, Washington, D.C., down to Washington, D.C. also, certain infrastructures when you go to Midtown Manhattan, you know? Oh, yeah. They have the infrastructure of the Roman Empire. Up at Yale. The pillars. And the main thing that... Wall Street. Wall Street. Also, Wall Street. When you go back to... Roman pillars. And then they also have Apis the Bull, which goes back to ancient Egypt, but, you know... But when you go over to the... the the, the, um, the meat of it, um, the ancient Roman Empire, they had a Senate house, they had something called Capitol Hill, you know? And what do America have to Capitol, Capitol Hill? Hill? Capitol Hill is in Washington, D.C. The Romans have Capitol Line here. Capitol, Capitol Line. Also, you have the Democrats and the um, Republicans, which back then was called the um, Clavians, the Clavians and the Patricians. So, same thing. This different name reincarnated. Oh, that's how we know that's the image of the beast, which is the the four beaches, the ancient Roman Empire. And so that's the stadiums. image. And those stadiums represent the Coliseum. Stadiums. The stadiums, also the stadiums, also the gladiatorial games like NFL football. Bread and circus. Um, um, bread, and bread and circus. circus which is, um, also boxing, gladiatorial games. So that's that goes Sorry, the bro. bread and circus. But nowadays they call it, instead of bread and circus, they call it welfare and entertainment. That's, that's, true. True. It's, it's, that's it's, true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Damn. Damn. Uh, that's that's bad. Come on. And the Statue of Liberty goes back to Rome as well. Say again? The Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty. There was a, Ro a Roman goddess, uh, Libertas. Mm. More information for you. See, you ain't yeah. gonna see us marching down the street. Yeah, we don't need to. We're yeah, teaching yeah. you, brothers, so you yeah. can teach. You know? I got a question. Did Daniel Flavian and Douglas be um, create the Coliseum? Yeah, yeah, they wanted to build it. Because they were talking, like they're talking about America now, America's dead, nobody respects America. That's that's what they were saying before uh, uh, this guy, uh, uh, their the father, uh, Vespasian came. Before that, they had the year of the Four Seasons. Yeah. People were saying the uh, Roman Empire is dead, it's dead. So they had to build it back up. So they had what's called a public, public work. And the public work was the Roman Colosseum, which at that time was called the Flav, Flav, Flavian um, Colosseum. I think it was the Flav, Flavian Amphitheater. Look it up. Go to the Col go to the uh, the Roman Colosseum. Go to the history, and I guarantee you it's going to say the original name for it is the Flavian uh, Colosseum. And the reason why they did that was to build Rome back up because they had the games. Go ahead. Real quick, uh, this is uh, First Maccabees 8, verse 15. It says, "Moreover, they had made they had made for themselves a senate house, wherein 320 men sat in council daily, consulting all way for the people, to the end that they might be well ordered." I think it's uh, 435 now, right? Okay. Senate men, 435. Well, well, the time is 435. Senate is 100. Sends a hundred. Okay. Yep. Go ahead, read it, brother. Go it's, ahead. Um, read it says, "What is the what is the kind of seem original name? The Flavian Apple Theater. Apple Theater. What, the did I, what did I just say? Am I good or what? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it says, did, 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 "Are you taking notes, General yes. Latonya Oliga?" Oh, I did something. Like <laughs> <laughs> How did you get all this knowledge? I got I go, the spirit. The spirit. And I hear, I hear a word, a white man says a word, I Google that shit, man. Yeah. Get all the information. I don't go out there and buy a book. I Google that shit. Go ahead, I Google it. Remember, I did uh, some studies on Nero, proving that he was drunk. So he's a part of that definition, too, because it says um, Domus, Domus Areva was a great palace built under the orders of Nero after the fire of Rome. 
but even before that, it said Nero was into sports and uh, chat racing, which he rigged, just like the courtesy. But anyway, but um, he also was big into um, uh, building development, just like Trump is major building. Yeah, because he attended some of the UFC, the last UFC he was yeah. there. Yeah. There was another one, the first one in Madison Square Garden. He Boxing was down. Matches. He was there. Boxing match with Tyson. Yep. He was there. That's it. That's 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 it. That's Nero. He, he tried to buy an NFL team back in the day, but they wouldn't let him in. Yeah. Well, he he tried to make his own team, his own his own version of it. Didn't, it didn't pan out. And I said that Vince McMahon make it make his own league at the XFL. That's, that's, that's it. That's it. XFL. And didn't go nowhere. In the series Brilliance, the dude Bobby Bobby Axelrod, he was trying to own a team like the NFL. And they was like, on this day and age, it's like being knighted. In some type of club or whatever, it's like them being knighted. But that's just for the 70s, right? Yeah, but they show you. They're letting you know, brother. They tell you something. What's that? Put it out there. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Back into the revelation. Go back to verse 3? Yeah. No, go, yeah, go back to that part. All right, this is the... The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as we were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. Yeah, his deadly wound was healed. That's going into the Renaissance era. Uh, Renaissance means rebirth. So the Renaissance was going into the revival or the rebirth of ancient Greece and Rome culture. It says, and all the world wandered after the beast. Yeah, everyone was admired at, you know, Esau's power, him being the rulership. You know, through his sword, he lived. So people looked up to him, and they worshipped him. Revelation 13 and 4, And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast. Yep, they worshipped him by following his laws, his uh, order, his culture, his religion. All the different philosophies, you know, people worship. Saying, who is like unto the beast? Yeah, because uh, Esau ate him, he looked at as the most high, you know. People look at Esau like he's undefeated and he's untouchable. It reads. Yeah, he got his image as the most high, yep. son of the most high, yep. the angels. And now people believe it through his yeah. eyes. Still believe. 2023, yep. they still believe. That's because they don't read. The scriptures tell you the color, but people just. Him blinded. Him. Lord yeah. got him blinded. Yeah, that's really what it is. Um, Isaiah 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou You gotta explain. You gotta bring yeah. it. Yeah. It says, um, how art thou fought, fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Yeah, uh, heaven is symbolic for our uh, rulership. Because this is a uh, prophecy that is written from the past. But um the so-called white man which is Lucifer, the word Lucifer means a uh, light bearer, all right? That's why they call themselves the uh, Illuminati, okay? Because they bear the light and wickedness, all right? But the true Lucifer, the true the true uh, so-called Illuminati is Yahweh Shah and his men, the, the elect of the nation of Israel, all right? And he's exalted, he's exalted um, in his kingdom because this is his time to rule. And all these other nations, they follow after the ways of uh, Esau, the so-called white man. It says, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Yeah, the so-called white man, he's going to be cut down to the ground when Yahweh Shah takes him out of his rulership. All right? And he and he weakened the nations because he had the nations under his feet. Just to add on to what uh, he was reading about how the, uh, the, 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 um, the so-called white man is looked at as a god. Okay? That's it. Hey, read, I'm going to read it again. This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 4. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Yeah, this is what the people are saying. Who is able to make war with the so called white man Esau so Verse Verse 5 And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things it was given unto him a mouth speaking great things now that mouth is going to murder and blasphemies and power was given unto him yeah so power was given unto america america comes from great britain and they exercise all the uh the lifestyles the philosophies of ancient rome as we mentioned earlier 
you know, going to the architect, the buildings. Uh, if you go around the court, uh, lower Manhattan, you see all the buildings look like ancient room. I work in one of those buildings. You got the pillars, you know, that's going back to the room. We follow the Greg Gordon calendar. You know, we, we, we follow the holidays. Things that I need. It's, uh, it's really this is uh, Revelation 20 and 2. It says, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent. And this is talking about um, when uh, the ancient Romans went down, the Edomites. It says, he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him. Yep. And this is Revelation 20 and 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And that's when the Israelites went into rulership. And then they were called the, um, the ancient Holy Roman Empire, but there was a whole. And it says, they cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more because why they went into the caves till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loose a little season. Okay. This is Revelation chapter 13 verse 5 and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. And that's going to the 350 years when Israelites were in captivity, serving hardcore bondage. And that's when we were spiritually dead, but through the spirit of Yahweh Shemar Shah, we were awakened uh, through our elder Abba Bivens, Yep. which is Elijah the prophet, you know. He brought us back through the spirit of Yahweh Shemar Shah by teaching the knowledge we can understand of the scriptures. Yeah, fulfillment of uh, Malachi 4 and 5. Somebody had their hand up? Oh. Well, speak on, speak on. There's a book. It's called the Medieval Empire of the Israelites. Another Going into way the of history. Saying the dark ages. Dark age. Somebody look up the word dark ages. And watch what Esau is going to say. Oh, that yeah. was a time when we really yeah. nothing was really yeah. happening. Yeah, nothing was really happening with them. I remember that in school, like the fifth grade. They were saying like dark ages were like um, I remember they they said um there was no innovation. No enlightenment. No enlightenment. Well, Esau, yeah. Jake was ruling shit they, yeah, yeah, yeah. they were making shit happen, man. Yeah. Nope. Well that's that's oh, a good look book. That. Look at that, look at that. Put that on screen there, bro. Let, 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 leave it oh, on the so uh yeah. general will tell y'all like I can write it down books. Yeah, <laughs> he's into them books. <laughs> well this book here. This is used, five hundred dollars, but original, brand new. They want a thousand dollars for it. They don't want you to under. They don't want you to have this history, because right. what Jake is going to spend that thousand dollars on a book? That's right. We don't need to buy the books. We already know. Okay, but it's called. I just confirmed. It's, it's called the medieval empire of the Israelites. So you go into the book. I open it up. Certain parts. You got Jake's with um with um the medieval armor on, going like this, showing their eyes and going like that's where they got that from. Yeah. And they had the swords in their hands. The knights, the knights. The knights yeah, had the yeah. swords in their the hands. The, the, yeah, the fight had the swords in their hands. They had the horses, garments, and horse, some of the horses had pure gold on. Some of them, some, some of the garments had the, the, the armor was pure gold, you know? But they just, that was for sure because gold is softer than metal. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. really use they, gold they, in the yeah, um yeah, yeah. Well, well, in the well, battle. Right, so because the metal that they used the most so, uh, was iron. Right, you right. make weapons and shields. Gold is just for looks. But this, you know? a, this book is five hundred and thirty-two dollars used, paperback, hardcore, hardcover. They want a thousand dollars, brand new. So they don't want you to have this history. Who going to spend a thousand dollars on this book? Yeah, but then a Source magazine is what? How, how much is a Source magazine? <laughs> 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 okay. got, a, got a definition. Right. Wikipedia says the Dark Ages is a term for the early Middle Ages or occasionally the entire Middle Ages in Western Europe as the uh -huh. fall. As the fall, right after the fall of the Western Roman Empire that characterizes it as marked by economic, intellectual, and cultural decline. Read that again, please. I got you. Yep. It says the Dark Ages is a term for early Middle Ages or occasionally the entire Middle Ages in Western Europe after the fall of the Western Roman Empire that characterizes it, characterizes it as marked by economic, intellectual, and cultural decline. Yeah, yeah they right, they yeah, right. No, no, it was talking about they wasn't benefiting yeah. from, yeah. so they said fuck them niggas, they were running yeah. shit, they were 
prospering, you know, the Moors and all that, man. The Moors gave a lot to the world. That's right. So they were saying, now we don't recognize. That's what they're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say this right now. This video right now is an instant classic. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to damn sure put it on my page. Oh, hell yeah. Put it on your page. All the, this video right yes, here, yes, put yes, it on all yes. your pages, man. Oh, but this is a classic right oh, here, man. To back you up, Apostle. It's a classic, brother. Tell me it's a classic, yeah, oh, yeah. brother. To back up we ain't even finished yet. We ain't even yeah, halfway yep. through. Yep. See, we getting deep. Getting we getting deep. deep. Fix right it. about now. Hey, to cool. back you up. Uh, uh, I'm going to get you a little, little, little bit. Who made no account of his labors. Right. That's right. why all the years of, of the Moors to Esau is nothing. Yeah, yeah. The scriptures say who made no account of his labors. Intellectual decline. This this is a society you that's intellectual. Esau talks in code. Yeah. They say certain things, but you you gotta be on that code to understand. It, man. Well, what is this society? Is it not intellectually declined? Yeah. Remember the Renaissance man we ran into? Oh yeah, he he ran. The museum, yeah. He ran. We. Because yeah. I said what I said what does yeah. I, I I think you said I kind of paused immediately. Yep. yep. And I said what was the Renaissance all about? And he kind of gave me some bullshit. I said no, the Renaissance is about taking down black images and putting up white images, and he ran down the street. I said, where are you going? He put his track shoes Oh, you was there. Come here. You was there. You was there. You was there. He was there. He put his track shoes on. Brother, you're from Hawaii. He was there. And we took him down to the museum, brother. What, what, how'd he act? When he saw all the relics, he said, oh, shit. Oh, oh, got the old man. God damn, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, what's that, um, that character Michael B. Jordan like, played? The term knight, and that kind of blew me away. Um, the term knight really referred to the knights being dark skinned, you know, and that, that was like right in front of your face, you know, like damn. That's where they get the, um, the phrase God bless you. Because during the Black Death, the yeah. um, two thirds of the population was dying. Yep. So the first symptom was consistent sneezing. So I believe it was Pope Regular. Then you got that first. rash around your neck. Oh! Ring around the rosy. Ring around the rosy. That's what souls are saying. Pocket full of posts. As a Pope Regular, Regular the first, he issued a decree to, to put a blessing over the people because the, once they seen the symptoms of you sneezing, they assumed right. he was going to die. God so bless you. So he said, put a blessing over the people. So yeah. now when people sneeze, you say, God bless you. Right. Wow. How the hell is Esau? German, he don't believe in it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, God bless us. They show it out on our And Jake's are the original Germans. Old Ger a lot of them Ger Germans, as you see, a lot of them is Jake. There was a point where Jake was just running Germany. Right. And when Esau came in, they pushed Jake out. But a lot of them left his seed. Like if you go, if you go back to Joe Lewis, he fought a German guy that, that beat him and knocked him out named Max Miller. I believe he was a Jake. Right. When you read the history on this guy, he said, I know how to beat Joe Lewis, but I'm not going to tell you. Now, you know who told him how to beat Joe Lewis? Jack Johnson. Because Jack Johnson wanted to be a part of that entourage, but he said, you too controversial. Controversial. So Jack Johnson said, y'all know Jack Johnson, right? Yes. Jack Johnson said, you know, I'm going to go to the other side and tell them all his secrets. Because he was a master analyst in boxing. He said, Joe, every time he throws a jab, his hand goes down, just hit him with the overhand right. Keep hitting him, but he couldn't figure it out. Joe came back and the smallest of dude. You heard the scream that no, he hit him with so he came up in there and just bam, hit him with the shot, he hit him, and you heard the scream, like ah! They took him to the hospital, that moment was all broken up. Bones all, he's all fucking ripped, broke, his back broke. But after that, Max Mellon became good friends with Joe, and when Joe was down on his luck, guess who was sending him money? Max Mellon. Max Mellon loved Joe. Frank Sinatra loved Joe so much that he was he he uh he was a spokesman for uh, Pat Blue Ribbon, Ribbon Bear, and they would pay him. They would pay Frank uh, Frank uh, Frank Sinatra. And Sinatra said, "Don't even give me this center right to Joe." So there was a lot of Edomites that admired Joe. Right? Well, Frank Sinatra was a Jake, I think. Jake, Jake, Frank oh, Sinatra yeah. was a Jake. He was a Jake. Yep. Frank Sinatra, because he was a he was um, um he was Sicilian. Mafia's number of niggas. He was yeah, Sicilian, and, um, and he and um um this dude um um Carlo Gambino was his godfather. Makes sense. Makes sense. That's what the movie uh, Sto um, God, um, Godfather was about. Was about yeah. See, where he said you can act like a man. Yeah, yeah. I was supposed to be uh, Carlo Gambino. I was supposed to be uh, Frank Sinatra. Uh, Frank Sinatra. Oh, yeah. 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 They're in a picture together, Carlo and, uh, yeah. and Frank. Yeah. They mentioned that in a movie Mannequin too. You know that. The, um, the, the, the mannequin's supposed to be from the um, Middle East times, and the dude said, um, the dude sneezed, 
I, and he said, bless you something, and then she was like, kazoo time. That, that's what I remember yeah, that word. Bless, bless, God bless you. God bless you in, uh, God bless you in Germany. Let's get back into the, into the breakdown, man. You want to go home and eat? Yeah, I'm, I'm on hungry. This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against the Most High to blaspheme his name. Yep, he blasphemed his name by saying the Most High name is God. Catholic Jehovah, Church. Catholic, Catholic Church. Church yep. All these religions. And his tabernacle. Sing Single-handedly, the Catholic Church. And his tabernacle. His tabernacle is talking about Israel. And them that dwell in heaven. Which are the angels. That's why uh, the book of Job 924 he covered the faces of the judges thereof through our iconoclasm by destroying our images and portraying the most high to be so called white. That's what you got to use. Yeah, the brother just read it. We call it a period of in intellectual decline. Mm -hmm. Putting us down. Verse, verse 7 And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Yep was given unto him to make war with the saints because uh the book of daniel talk about how he saw wear out the saints through uh hardcore slavery and this uh this uh great kingdom that we live in it was built off the blood and sweat and tears of the israelites and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations yep because the earth was given into the hand of the wicked he saw edom he is the ruler of the earth today but it's temporary because the triumphant of the wicked is short it's for a moment that's right and this is the last heathen rulership you know right. like the book of daniel you know, about how, uh nebuchadnezzar had that dream about the uh the statue and we're currently at the part iron the part clay and that backs up with the end remember how we read about the bear so that all ties in that shows that we in this we're in the end of esau's rulership yeah the toes of that image then the rock came and yep. destroyed the whole image. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. This is verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Yep, all shall worship him by following his orders and his culture. His New lifestyle. world order. New, New world, world order. order. They're going to take that chip. Yep, yes, sir. Whose names are not written in the book of life. And that's going to two thirds of the nation of Israel because they're going to bow down to Esau, as the apostle said, and take his chip. Which is the microchip, the mark of the beast. Right. And its consequences, if you take that, you read about that in the next chapter, you're going to be destroyed in the sure. presence of the Lamb and, and the angels. And these other camps that are teaching contrary to what we're teaching, oh, man, they're, they're going to be ashamed of their thing. They they're actually lost. set up the chipping stations. Their people are going to run at them for answers. They're going to have no answers. They got two answers. Go ahead and take it, meaning they sold out, or they got to admit that GMS was right. Everybody going to be like, where's the GMS camp at? Beautiful, brother. Beautiful. Right. It reads, whose names are not written in the book of life of the land slain from the foundation of the world. Verse 9, if any man have an ear, let him hear. Yeah, a spiritual ear. You know, only the elect is going to hear the words of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. But, you right. know, they want to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. It's the right. same for everybody. You know, as we're standing here, you see Israelites walking past you're not considering what's being said. Verse 10, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. All the heathen nations saw what he saw in the so white man. He was old in his heathen's hand. And Jeremiah talks about all thy adversaries, every yep. one of them shall go into captivity. Nice, nice. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So it says, he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. And we know that Esau, Edom, he was blessed with the sword in the book of uh, Genesis 27 chapter. He was blessed with the fatness of the earth, the dew of heaven, and he, was, and he lived through his sword. Now, everybody kept up with the river, the Montgomery, Alabama, the river thing. Mm. All these Jakes, even them Uncle Toms were happy that Jakes beat the wet. The mo all them Uncle Toms are talking good about the white man, they all talking good about Jake. No, I'm, I'm not a violent person, but Jake did, even the women, man, they all, they, all of Jake's 
Certain Jakes ain't saying nothing because they really want Esau to get his ass on It reads. Oh, read that part again with the sword. Con. This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. He oh, that. By the way, guess who invented that the folded chair? What's his name? Nathaniel Alexander. Nathaniel Alexander? Look it up. Nathaniel Alexander invented the folding chair. And now the joke, the joke is this. Uh, how does it go with Rosa Parks? They didn't want to give up the seat, but now Jake is giving Esau the seat. Yeah. And they had this oh, that's a good one. Him and he was trying to fight him, he was catching pound him, bow! And he was pounding the Edomite woman on the head. Yeah. He pounded the Edomite two times, then the Edomite woman laying down, he pounded him on the head. Yeah, that's Turned because... He pounded him her on the head. Yeah, you got one Jake jumping to the water instead of swimming to go, oh, yeah, yeah. go into the battle. Yeah. That's because Jake's about to take the power seat. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, I guess this is Zechariah that 9 and 13. When I have bent Judah for me, filled the boat with Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as a sword of a mighty man. And that's what's getting ready to happen soon. That time now. Con. Read again. Yeah, that, that guy who swam across, he was a mighty man. See how he was. He I don't think a shark could move that fast, man. Was that dude was cutting that water, man. Imagine getting that power. That's a lot real quick. That they showed a still of that dude swimming, like coming out the water, and it was a caption saying, "If you ain't if, if you ain't riding like this, we, we ain't homies." She was funny. So, <laughs> there's, there's one chick. She said, uh, "She said Mark Spitz couldn't go." To, you know what's that guy? The, the, Mark Spitz. Oh, yeah, but what's the other guy? The newer guy. Michael Phelps. She said Michael Phelps couldn't move that. <laughs> he was swimming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. He was cutting down water. Man. He was only 16. All the other guys swim. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Jake, you know, Jake, don't Benjamin swim. Levi swim. Jake, y'all got to swim. Get your water for the water. Since you got to whip ass. I was swimming since I was in the water. I was swimming since I was in the water. I was in they got a band, you can't go in the water. Come. Come on, let's go. Con, this is Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Now wait a minute, Psalm 149, it says to, to bind their kings, they're going to carry what? A sword, that the, the high praises be in their mouth and a sword in their hand. The two-edged sword, yeah, there you go. It reads, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Ooh. Saints are the Israelites. You know, yes, we're patiently waiting to our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, avenge us, uh, bring judgment upon the heathen nations for the abdominates. We're literally going to carry a sword in the kingdom. Literally. And I ain't no, well, that's spiritual. No, no, no. Our sword, like Esau's sword, is one side, it's sharp. Our sword is two sides. Yeah. So you swing this way, you cut. Swing that way, you cut. Hi, hi, Bruce Ariad. You cut on the left, yeah, you and you on cut the on the right. right. Yep, yep. <laughs> the sword is burning you. Oh, y'all, you, feel, you it. feel it? Y'all would have loved hi, Bruce Ariad. Yeah, Ariad said that. He said the sword is burning you, cause when you cut the crack his head, yep. you feel it. Man, when that spirit hit him on 44th and Broadway, he used to speak on both sides of the street. People were like mesmerized, cause he had that voice plus you know the spirit. Yeah, man. Come on now. God. This is Revelation. We're trying to get up out of here. We're trying to eat. Yeah, we want to eat. This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns. And two horns is going into Democrats and Republicans. As you mentioned, that's the uh, the plebeians and the patricians coming back. Bounce off. Nation. Yep. Bounce off. Yep. That's right, bro. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. Yep, he spake as a dragon. Now we go into the word dragon. The Greek word is dracon. That's nice. going into the rigorous, uh, severe laws. And in the near future, Esau Edom, he's going to create. Well, he already did that with the with the jab. Yes, he, he made it with. He said, "Look, you can't go outside. You can't yep. do." I was still going outside. I was doing my walk back then. I was like, it was nine o'clock. I was still. I saw cops out there. I just waved to them. They waved back. But everybody was just staying. Man, fuck that bullshit. You know. <laughs> 
But, but this time, that was a trial run. Trial run. This time, when they do the mark, they're going to really come down. That's the dragon part. They're going to really come down. Yeah, yeah. we're going we're gonna to need that spiritual power from Yahweh Bashem. We're going to need the angels to be with us to protect us. Yeah. Esau, he's going to create laws. Oh, oh yeah. So how many of y'all ready to die to the truth? That's powerful faith. Powerful faith. Because the ones of you that die, you're going to rise up before the ones of us that are living. Done. And, and when you die, you're going to meet Mo, uh, yep. uh, Abba. Abba. You're going to know, you're going to know a whole yep. lot of things. Hell the high priest you ain't going to want to come back. Right. And most are going to make it come back so you can get the delivery. So the next time you come back from the dead, you're going you're gonna to get delivered first. We'll come out, out in the graves, man. That's why the um, Thessalonians says that the dead in Yahweh Shasha rise first. People that died in faith, they're going to be the first one in the church. Then he said, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's still hope, even if we die. That's why the scripture says. Well, we, we ain't living. Yeah. This ain't no fucking life, man. Yeah. Got trannies all around. And, yeah, yeah, that's come why on, it man. says, be faithful unto death, and you will receive the crown of life. That's right. You get with a woman, you don't know if, it's a, if it was a man. What kind of life is that? You know? Disgusting. It's disgusting, like you said. You got it, bro. And let me say this to you brothers that got women that are not believe none of them are believers. Because even if they say they believe, when it's time to take that chip and they can't eat nothing, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna, they're gonna take the damn chip. So a lot of y'all get ready for that, man. Yep. You know what I'm saying? If your woman take a chip, then fuck her. Fuck that bitch, man. That's right. This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 12. And he exercises all the power of the first beast. Yeah, so the revived Roman Empire exercised me and they performed all the, uh, the ways of ancient Rome. It reads, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. Yeah, and do his deceit. You know, through his laws, his order, everyone serving he's so evil. I got a question. Washington, D.C., right? Also known as the DMV. Washington, D.C. is part Delaware, part Maryland, and part Virginia, right? It's 10 square miles. 10 square. Before Washington, D.C. was Washington, D.C., what was it? No, no, it was the what was not not a name or something. Blockage. Blockage. Nope. I've read that before. It was known as it was uh, it was uh, marshes. You don't know what marshes are, right? Like land with water on it, marshes. So they had so they, they, there was nothing there, it was like no man's land, right? So what they did was before they built up DC, when you buy land, you buy it by lot, right? So you number the lot, lot number one, lot number two, so forth. What lot was uh, DC built on? What number lot was DC built on? What, what, what? 666. Check it out. They used to, if you go to Google, they ain't gonna tell you, but years ago, I actually had a, a picture on the web of the actual map, but I don't think you can find it right now. Now they got the lots, right? Of an old map before DC was, you know, built upon. So you got, you got, you got a lot number six six five, lot number six six seven. The where it says lot number six six six, it's not even here. It's just empty. But, all, but it gives you the numbers of all the lots except that one. So common sense tell you that's got to be lot number six six six. Now when you look down on DC, what do you see? An owl. A picture of an owl. There you go. There you go. The, the Capitol the building. The owl is in the Capitol building. Capitol building. Yep. Capitol building. Yep. Belly of the beast. Yep. Come on. Okay. This is all. I'm going to read it again. This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 12. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Verse 13, 
and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth. And that's going into the, thumb, the missiles that was created uh, through Julius Robert Oppenheimer. He was that uh, Isaiah 14 and 6, he created the smith that blowed the poles in the fire. Uh, fi uh, 54, 54 and 16. 16. Like you got the Oppenheimer movie? Yeah, that plug that. Well, yeah, come, come, come. It was four of them. It was three of us. It yeah. was um, the four horsemen. Jack Parsons, Robert Oppenheimer, and um, um, Bonabon Brown, mm -hmm. and I think it was um, this dude Einstein. Yep, yep, Einstein. Yep, and uh, he's known as the yeah. It's three hours everybody, long. Everybody said, everybody sees a movie and gave him excellent reviews. Right. It's three hours long. I got to see it. I'm not going to go to the theater because I would not be caught in a black dark room with a bunch of demons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, man. I, I can't, hey, I'm thankful that the, the jab thing, and I'm thinking about it. I said, man, why, why did I used to go to the fucking dark room with, with fucking strangers in it, man? I said, from there, I, I, said, I don't go to movies no more. Correct me if I'm wrong. The first aerial, the air, the first aerial, major aerial war was World War One. Yeah. With, with um, yeah. with airplanes shooting, yeah. shooting yeah. down on. Yeah. 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 Okay, I wanted to make it. Yeah, that's Revelation sure. Nine. Right. Revelation Nine. Yep. Yeah. Con, I agree. So come on, let's go. Yep. Let's go. Con. You trying to eat? It says he calls the fire come down from heaven. That's when all uh, little boy and fat man hit Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And that made the world terrify the Esau Eden. Yeah. It reads that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth. Yep, which is little boy, fat man. And the sight of men. In the sight of men. Right. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. Yeah, so Esau Eden, he deceived the earth by his miracles, by his technology. And in the near future, he's going to deceive the earth by saying that if you take the mark of the beast, you can live forever, you can have powers, uh, it'll cure your diseases, you know, your ailments, and people won't get swooped by that. Mm -hmm. It reads... Yeah, he's trying to combine man and machine together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a Frankenstein. Transhuman. Transhuman, yeah. That's why you notice all the songs that sound like robots. Yeah. With that auto-tune shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, man. They weren't singing like that back in the 80s, 70s. You know? Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, mm -hmm. saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. So the image is going to the new world order. Absolutely. This is when Esau even when it takes full control upon all the citizens by receiving, by having them receive the Rogma, but the elect, Lord willing with those men, they're not going to take it. Why is there a Latin in inscription on that New World Order? It goes back to Rome. Yep, it's by Rome. Mm -hmm. It says, which had the wound by a sword and did live. Oh. Verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. The, uh, ancient Roman Empire had power to give life to the image of the beast through them following, you know, exercising the ancient Rome customs, the culture, the laws. Right. It reads that the image of the beast shall both speak. It says shall both speak. That's going to the draconian laws. So Esau in him, he's going to create laws to where it's going to go into it. It says, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So there's going to be laws created in the near future to where if you don't receive the mark of the beast, which is the karagma, the, uh, the RFID chip, any microchip, you're going to be put to death. And that's talking about some of us, man, yep. like we said earlier. Yep. That's why some of us are going to be martyrs for Yahweh Shah. We're yep. going to be beheaded. How that scripture go, arm yourselves likewise with the sufferings of Yahweh Shah. Yep. So we meditate on that daily. Yep. We may have to sacrifice ourselves for the for this cause, you know. Yep. That's how serious it is. You got these Israelites out there. They don't know how serious this thing is. They're playing games, man. They're taking the word, rapping with it, and making money. And all. That's not what this is about. They're going to learn, though. Verse 16, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor. Yeah, so he saw he's going to require all citizens, uh, small, great, no matter your status, rich and poor. If you're locked up, if you're on the street, he's going to require you to, to, to do this. Sure. It reads, free and bond to receive a mark in the right hand 
or in their foreheads. As the apostle mentioned, in order to understand the scriptures, you got to go into the origin of the words, the Hebrew and the Greek. Now, the Hebrew word, I mean, the Greek word for mark is paragma, which means uh, imprinted mark, things sculptured, graven image. That's going to be the chip. And we go into the root word of paragma is karax, which is a metal post. And that metal post is going to be the syringe where they, you know, insert the chip in you. Right. And then when you go into the root word of Karaks, it's grapho, which means to write. Right. So all the records, you know, your information, your currency is going to be on the chip. That's right. Aaron Russo said that to uh, Alex Jones. He said, if, if you piss off the elites, they can turn off your chip. And then you can't buy nothing. You can't, you can't partake in commerce. Aaron Russo said it, man, to Alex Jones. And for those of you uh, type in Aaron Russo, Mark of the Beast, he goes into it. Verse 17, yeah, really got it, yeah. ask any doctor, um, a, a needle puncture is called a clean cut. Any, any doctor or surgeon there, it's a needle puncture is called a clean cut. I'm going to read it one more time. This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. And he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. Number six, number six, that's where you get the word sex from. Yeah, that your rod is number six part of your body. Mm. One, two, three. That's number six. Pick that up. And uh, with the number six, six also goes into scissors. Scissors cut six cuts. So the six, 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 they've got to cut into. That's the only way you can get it. They got to cut into. It reads, free and I'm going to read it again. It's a lot. Revelations 13 and 16. And he calls of all, both small and great rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. This is the microchip, any microchip. Verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. So the, if you don't receive the, uh, if you don't take the karagma, you're not gonna be able to participate with society. You're not gonna be able to buy, you're not gonna be able to sell. But two thirds of the nation of Israel, they don't fear y'all by Shemuel Shah. Shah. They're full. They're going to bow down to Esau and receive his mark. But Isaiah 59 chapter 2 is about how those servants are going to eat. So we got to keep the faith in the dope and trust in the words of y'all by Shemuel Shah. Shah. Yeah. Isaiah 59 yeah. uh, 65. 65. Oh, 65. 65. Oh, yeah. 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. I know that by heart. Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, this is Revelation 13 and 17. It reads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Verse 18. And the number is going to that universal product code, 12 digits. Uh, basically, you're going to be a number if you receive the mark. Verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man and his number is 603 score and six. Now we're going to the Greek word for 603 score six, that's going to cause stigma. Now when you go into the etymology of the word stigma, it means to puncture. So that's showing you that this, this mark that's written of in the book of Revelation 13 and 16, it's a physical mark. It's not spiritual, it's not sin, it's an actual literal thing that's gonna happen where Esau and Edom is gonna attempt the entire world to receive his mark. Yeah, that's it. That was a great. That was a great. Oh, that was yeah. Look at this. Watch the comments on this on this video, right? It's automatic. I'm putting on my page. Bars already on your page. Yep. Y'all you put that out. It's a classic. There's a lot of information. And if, if you look at this, these are um three companies that produce the RFID chip, and it's called XC Wireless. You see, it has the Greek character for Psi. X mark, it got the Greek character for chai, and so mark, it, got, it starts with an S, that's stigma. Chai, psi, stigma. So that's not a coincidence. These are each companies that produce the RFID chip, and the first character of each is now chai, psi, stigma. Now they're going to take the video down. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're going to take the video down right now. I know that it's a take it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Hey, how much more, how much more of uh, what we saying? Is it true? Huh? Right. Pride, man. 
Come on, come on. Right here, man. I oh, didn't even know that. Come on, come on. I don't know everything. I know a lot of that. I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we're going to close up. We're going right. to salute you, brother. Now, let's do this quick, right? So we can eat. Yeah. That was broken in one. Now we're going to eat. You call it, we out of here. Call your shadow. I'm Mario. Barack. Yeah, I'm watching your shot, brother. Do it yourself. Do it yourself. Do it yourself. Got the matat dismissed. Sure, sure. Right, show the one, brother. Yeah, for sure. Sure.